Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the for each method of the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my website, javacjava.com, select begin. Scroll all the way down here to the array list for each method. Okay, you must have a basic understanding of both generics and lambda expressions in order to follow along with this tutorial. Now, I highly recommend watching the following tutorials as a prerequisite for this tutorial. Right here's just a list of six of them there. So, the for each method provides a way to loop through the array list and performs various actions by providing a lambda expression. In order to explain the parameter list, I will begin by creating a simple array list that will only accept string objects. Okay, I'm going to come up here briefly for a moment here. And so basically here is the, the method signature, right, for the for each method. And it has a return type of void. And then this looks really confusing, you know, consumer, and then you got some diamond syntax, question mark, super E, which is actually a wild card, by the way. And then you've got basically what will be your, your parameter variable parameter local variable there which will actually be a reference variable but um, I'm going to go over all this stuff and this will actually make sense by the end of the tutorial and you'll see how all this works so um, in order to explain the parameter list I'll begin by creating a simple array list that will only accept string objects right so array list and then inside the diamond syntax I'm specifying the string class str list is our reference variable and a new array list object. And of course I'm using the, uh, the inf well, basically when it infer infers string over here, I'm using that, that particular syntax there to initialize this new array list, okay? So point being, critical point, this array list will only take basically the string class there because string doesn't have any subclasses, right? It's immutable. So str list, I'm gonna invoke the add all method here. And as the parameter for add all, I'm gonna pass in the arrays class as list, as list method, right, to create an, an array list with these four string objects in them there. Now, um, I've gone over the arrays as list in several of my previous array list tutorial there, but there's several other ways to initialize an array, but that's just one of the examples there. Now, the documentation for the parameter list, right, may appear somewhat confusing. There are three parts to the documentation for this one single parameter. The first part is the consumer functional interface. Okay, let's come up here to the documentation for the consumer interface. Okay, the Java 8 documentation. And basically this was introduced in Java 8, 1.8, and it is a functional interface, right? And it has one and only one abstract method here, and that's this one right here, return type void, and its name is accept, and it takes uh, just a single parameter, single generic parameter. Of course, this is uh, implicitly abstract there, so notice this next one down here is a default, so that's not our one and only one abstract method here. Okay, so now we know consumer is an interface, and specifically a functional interface. All right, so that's uh, drawing back, you know, in my introduction to uh, la uh, Lambda expressions, you'll, you'll know what that is now. Okay, the one and only abstract method in the consumer functional interface has a method declaration of void, and then accept name, generic, type, parameter. Because the consumer functional interface method has a return type of void, our Lambda expression cannot have a return value. Now let's begin by declaring a reference variable of type consumer, right? So consumer, type, right? And then we're specifying uh, string object only for that. And then C lambda will be our reference variable name. Now notice that I specified the string class inside of the diamond syntax as my generic type variable. That portion corresponds with the, basically this is read like wildcard super E, right? And that's being, E being, representing, you know, a class there or interface or something like that in the parameter list. Now specifying string there will limit the type of objects that can be passed to the lambda expression to just string in this particular case. Now at this point in my tutorial series, um, attempting to explain the super portion of wildcard super E will require some additional concepts, namely generic wildcards. For now, just match the class or interface type variable that was specified when the ArrayList was created, right? 
So um, array list string, just match it for consumer there. I am going to be doing a tutorial on, on generic wildcards, but that will be coming up probably fairly shortly after I do the array, array list stuff here. So um, let's go ahead and assign a lambda expression to C lambda, right? And C lambda, of course, is our consumer reference variable up here, right? And so I'm just going to set that equal to this lambda expression right here. X and then the lambda operator and then system out print line string literal right here plus X. Now in the above example, X can only be of type string because of the original declaration, right? That represents what gets passed in as the parameter here, basically. Okay. Um, now we re now we're ready to execute the for each method. Okay. So str list, which is our original array list reference variable, we're going to invoke the for each method using the dot operator and pass it the um, basically the consumer reference lambda here, right? Which is this whole entire thing here, action basically, right? And that. So the above statement will display the following lines to the console, looping through the values, right? And then plus apple, banana, peach, and pear, which is what's contained in the array list there. So as you can see, the for each method works just like looping through an array list using an ordinary for statement or an enhanced for statement. You know, something similar to this. Here's an enhanced for statement example, right? Like string x, right? String x and then our string list here right and you can see like on the for each right here that's representing that and then system out print line this particular statement right here matches exactly what we've got in our lambda statement here and x of course being our temporary in our enhanced for loop it's our temporary um, string variable it's essentially the same thing in the lambda expression up here okay all right, so this this is a little confusing here, but uh, let's go down and run some code and I'll step you through some stuff and, and show you various examples and it all should make sense by the time we're done with this. So let's come down here, highlight this source code, control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen here and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. Okay, let's go and open that up. Type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, if you receive an error message, go and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You kind of want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'll make a directory using the MD command called Java. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called array list for each. Okay, let's change directories to that. Notepad array list for each dot Java. Okay, that's going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. I'm going to go ahead and paste this stuff in here. Um, so basically, what I've got here is import java.util.star that's necessary for the array list um, arrays and collections here right okay um, i'm also going to be using the consumer interface right and that is in the java.util.function package here right and so i have to import that one as well so basically simple one class here uh, here's my main method entry point. And the first thing I'm going to do here is just demonstrate, um, well, create a, a new array list and just kind of reiterate some of the things I've gone over with in the, uh, in the previous array list tutorials there. The add method, the add all, right? Demonstrating the, you know, the arrays as list and then demonstrating the collections add all method here too by adding that too. So basically initializing the um, an array list, str list there. Okay. Then I'm going to use a good old ordinary for statement to loop through that list. And then I'll use an enhanced for statement to loop through that list. And then I'll use the for each method to loop through that list. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and then one more thing I'll do the for each just 
with the lambda right in there skipping right over the consumer to show you even like an even more shorthand version of that okay so i'm going to go ahead and compile this and then we'll kind of step through this one by one here so let's clear our screen java c to compile this java invoke runs the virtual machine and we want to invoke the array list for each class and so up top here um, you can see basically that um, you know added uh, Alabama Alaska and then the add all basically appends it to the end California Colorado right and then Hawaii New York so on the first one here just using a regular good old four statement and looping through those um, I invoked the get method and the get method is really simple it just gets the record that's at this current index number there right and of course the index number is in an array list starts off at zero so it displayed regular for statement and then plus it got the uh, the get gets the record at that particular index there right pretty simple Alabama Alaska California Colorado Hawaii New York all right so in the next one here I've got enhanced for statement and that one's pretty simple here for string s temporary reference variable there and then of course the the string list which is our array list that we want to loop through and then just display this with the console enhance for loop plus s so that displays of course the contents of the um, str list to the uh, console here all right so the next one here i'm doing consumer which is our um, interface functional interface specifically string class so anything that goes into there or basically out of there has got to be a string there and then c lambda being the reference variable and i'm assigning it to this lambda expression right here right x and then the lambda operator and then this one particular um, statement here system out print line for each method plus x okay so we've got our c lambda reference variable basically holding this lambda expression here and then str list dot operator to invoke the for each method pass it in c lambda and you can see what happens next here right on the for each method okay so now you can see for each method alabama alaska california colorado hawaii new york so that's basically how that worked there and then i'm going to show you one more little like a, a shorthand of, of that you don't even need to declare the consumer interface it's just when you're when you're learning this it's critical to understand that the for each method only accepts a consumer interface structure i guess basically is what you could call it right uh, and that's per the documentation there so if as long as we do a compatible lambda expression right we don't necessarily need to declare a consumer or string or anything like that right all this will basically be like inferred right so x being a string type right we'll get passed into the uh, let me let me pull this documentation back over here so don't confuse you guys too much right so our functional interface has the accept and i'm gonna pull this back right over here void accept t so we don't have any any sort of return type on this particular lambda expression right here this is just displaying it to the console and um so that matches our void return type and then accept being the method name and then just you know the uh the generic type there right well since we're dealing with strings anyway as long as we're doing some compatible stuff here just putting in the lambda expression itself will work just perfectly so here's a and of course what i'm displaying is for each without a consumer variable right so for each without a consumer variable you can see it loops through there too so that's basically what we've got there the the four different ways of looping through that array list there demonstrating the for each by you know having the the c lambda uh, variable there and then just putting the direct lambda expression right in there all right so the next thing that i'm going next and last thing i'm going to demonstrate here is basically i'm going to create another array list and i'm going to specify number okay now number is the super class of quite a few of the primitive um, integer 
It's a basically a primitive integer wrappers, right? It's a super class of them. Maybe I should just pull the, the documentation up there so I don't confuse you guys. Let's do. Okay, so class number and direct known subclasses, byte, double, float, integer, long, short, right? So like for example, the integer wrapper class for primitive integers is, uh, it extends number right here. So it's the subclass of number, right? Number is a super class of integer. So that tells it, we tell our array basically, we are only going to take either the number class or subclasses of that and put that into our array list here, right? And you'll notice I use the kind of the generic syntax here on the, um, when initializing the constructor here. So, and then I'm gonna use the collections class in the add all method. First parameter is the name of the array list that we wanna populate. And then I'm passing 41, 7.99, 108, 8.34F. These will all get auto boxed into the appropriate wrapper classes. This will get auto boxed into integer, double, integer, and float, right? Okay, so now I'm going to use the kind of like the abbreviated syntax where I'm just in, going to pass it the lambda expression as the parameter for the for each method here. So for each, and then x. In this particular case, it knows that x is going to be number. It's almost like it's uh, it's almost like it's inferred. But um, so x and lambda operator system dot out dot print line, and then I'll, of course we'll display x, and then plus a uh, three spaces and then x dot get class and the get class method is inherited all the way from the object uh, all the way up the hierarchy from the object class itself okay and then I'll display that to the console now um, <clears throat> we'll get this right here so I'm gonna move this off to the side right here so we'll get 41 class java.lang.integer, 7.99, right? Double, 108, integer, 8.34, float. All right, so you can see we've got several different, um, several different class types, but they're all derived from the number class right here. Okay, so on this last particular section here, um, the only thing that I'm going to do is basically put the consumer create a consumer CNUM variable right here of number type, right? And then specify that, you know, basically the exact same uh, Lambda expression as I've got up here in the for each. So basically I'm expanding this out just a little, little bit there. So you could see the consumer interface declaration on that. And then just numlist for each and then display that, you know, to the console there. Okay, we get the exact same thing as we would expect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you guys with some final thoughts. So the for each method comes in quite handy for simple loop and display actions. If you need to perform more complex logic, I personally recommend using the more traditional for and uh, enhanced for statements. That's just in my humble opinion. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.